Yes, this DAC, the SMSL RAW MDA1, has a thousand sound options. Actually, I rounded it. A thousand and fifty. Surely that's enough to last any audio file a lifetime. And I'm going to demonstrate them all in this video. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm going to try and demonstrate, let's say, six. See if you can hear the difference through YouTube's audio mangling system. I'll do my best, though, and use a WAV file as the source and upload my video with a WAV soundtrack. It's not my fault. So I'm going to skip all the normal stuff and look at what this DAC, the RAW MDA1, does that others don't. So I'm not covering everything. There are other reviews out there that cover stuff about this gadget that I'm not going to. Hey, I'm following my interests. What's fun to me? Firstly, though, there's an oddity round the back, which you may have noticed in my unboxing. Two coaxial inputs, two optical inputs. I've had a few DACs across my desk, and I don't think I've had more than one of each kind before. I'm not going to call this a massive point, but it wouldn't surprise me if there are enthusiasts out there who will be delighted to be able to switch among a wider than normal range of sources. Plus, USB-C, of course, which is the one I'll be using from my computer. Plus. Bluetooth, if you like that kind of thing. OK, that's that. Now, what about all these different sounds? A thousand and fifty. That's a lot of sounds. It comes from seven times ten times fifteen. As we'll see. Perms and comms and all that. Firstly, what do I mean by a sound? I have an internet, and the internet happens to have a handy dictionary. A distinctive characteristic or recognisable musical style, as from a particular performer, orchestra or type of arrangement, the big band sound. That's as close as I need. We can apply it to audio as we would to music. I like to call it sound texture, to be more clear, and you will find me using that phrase in my videos. I prefer to avoid sound quality, because that can imply good quality or bad quality, where texture is neutral. Anyway. I'll stick to just sound, now that we know what we mean. Now we know all about reconstruction filtering, don't we? Of course we do! DACs need it to make smooth analogue audio from sliced and diced digital and avoid any <laughs> and avoid any of that nasty aliasing, which is indeed nasty when you have it. Don't tell anyone. I quite like it as a musical effect for production. <laughs> I'm sure I'll make a video dedicated to the filter at some point in the future, when that digital storage oscilloscope I've been promised turns up. But for now, I'll let Betty summarise some of the compromises inherent in filtering. A minimum phase filter prioritises natural transients without pre-ringing, but suffers from phase distortion and some post-ringing. It may lose some transient detail. A linear phase filter provides perfect phase coherence, but introduces pre-ringing and potentially higher latency, which can affect the naturalness of transients. A fast roll-off filter ensures better attenuation of unwanted high frequencies, but can compromise high frequency detail and transient sharpness when combined with appetization. 
I reckon she's got that from ChatGPT. But it'll do for now. I can summarise it down some more. Different filter designs affect the audio differently, and none is perfect. The RAW MDA1 has seven filter options, and as I said, none is perfect, and that's the laws of physics for you. Now, whether you will hear any difference among the different types, let's see. If you look at this chart, you'll see, if you look hard enough, that is confusing. And I'm not so sure there aren't a couple of typos, but I'm going to pick what I think are the two most extreme settings. Minimum phase slow roll-off and linear phase fast roll-off. If you can interpret this chart better than I can, there's a comment section just waiting for you. Anyway, minimum phase slow roll-off followed by linear phase fast roll-off. 28 seconds of each. Did you hear any difference? Well, anything you do hear is going to be in the very high frequencies and transients. And of course, only if it gets through YouTube's audio. And of course, you'll need to have good enough ears. Please comment if you hear anything. Now, this is where things could get interesting. Of course, true audiophiles like a neutral sound without any colour at all. But then there are some who like their audio a little more exotic and prefer rich, warm tubes over cold, soulless transistors, or something like that. Anyway, the RAW MDA-1 has no fewer than ten sound colour options, three of which are meant to represent tubes. You know, I'd keep it on standard, which I presume means neutral. But let's compare. I'll play standard, followed by tube three. You know, listening direct from the output of the DAC, I think I can hear a bit more richness in the Tube 3 version. Is that a good thing? When I recorded the track, I put in as much richness as I wanted. I don't think it needs any more. I don't hear much in the way of messing about with the frequency response in any of the sound colours, so I'm guessing harmonics? What do you think? Oh no, the dreaded jitter. Do you suffer from jitter? Perhaps you're drinking too much coffee. Or perhaps you use long, cheap cables. Or you have a last century CD player. Or you have some kind of a sonic screwdriver that can make your Wi-Fi unstable. Anyway, whatever. The RAW MDA-1 has the answer. The Digital Phase Locked Loop, DPLL, which is the MDA-1's jitter killer. It has 15 settings. 15! I could have Betty read from the manual about this but the explanation is far from clear, and some of the text is missing. But you can pause and check for yourself. What I get from this is that if the stability of the source is good, the DPLL doesn't have to work so hard. If you're foolish enough to play audio from a TV, then crack it up higher.
<laughs> but cranking it surely must introduce some kind of dis benefit, if that's a word. Noise, artifacts, susceptibility to interference. I'm not an expert, but this is what my research tells me. Having said that, the proof of the pudding might be in the listening. Here are two clips, the first with the DPLL set to minimum, the second set to max. hear anything? I don't think there's any reason why you should. My source is a Mac Mini M2. The cable is the short USB that came in the box. There's nowhere else for jitter to rear its ugly head. What's to go wrong? So you're a hi-fi enthusiast, or indeed an audiophile. You want a DAC. Well, you have one already, but surely there's room for another. You could have a DAC with inputs, outputs, maybe a headphone socket, and that's it. Volume control? Minimalist. OK, so you might be able to enjoy just listening to music, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyone who is interested in audio surely wants to play around with it, have some controls to fiddle with, see what makes a difference, what doesn't make a difference, find the best combination of settings. So this is what I really find likeable about the RAW MDA-1 in comparison to the other DACs I've tested and reviewed. Personally, I probably don't need the fiddle factor, but I suspect there's a wide market of enthusiasts who would love to play with the options this DAC provides. 1,050 of them, as I said earlier. In particular, I'd imagine there are many enthusiasts who'd love to be able to hear the difference in different reconstruction filters, or even find out whether they can hear the difference. If you can, then you'll have fun weighing up the compromises, because all designs are compromised, and finding out your preferred option. If you can't hear the differences, then you can take comfort that no matter the filter design, you can still enjoy the music. I was sent the SMSL RAW MDA-1, but other than that and any affiliate links, there's no payment involved, so I can say what I like and have said it. See you soon.